Hello everybody, welcome to this episode of Turbo Shed and in this one we have 20 cheap Chinese injectors and we are going to flow test them on our rig and put a set of 8 matched ones into Turbo Shed. <laughs> So we'll just quickly run through this and explain how we've done it um, and you can build one of these yourself at home for next to nothing because this has been built out of bits we had lying around. Uh, so basically we've got a 1UZ inlet manifold because that allows us to test four injectors at a time um, and an old 1UZ fuel rail um, and pretty simply the way we've got this set up uh, we need a fuel feed first so I've got a 3 litre petrol tank from an old uh, go-kart that I was using on the dyno actually. Um, that feeds through a fuel filter into a copy 044 fuel pump uh, which are available for less than 20 quid if you do a bit of hunting around and they work just fine. Uh, we've got it into a cheapo Chinese fuel regulator uh, which was set at 43 psi. Um, the only thing to note was that when we first bought this regulator it wouldn't go below 60 pound uh, because it had the wrong spring in from the factory. Um, so we modified the spring as in cut a coil off um, and now we can get that to set. Uh, and then that returns back into the tank um, and this is the fuel feed to the fuel rail so basically that's our fuel system and that gives us 43 psi on the fuel rail that's good uh, next thing is that we then need to control the injectors um, and you need to run pulse widths and um, if you look at pulse widths of vehicles running between about 1 and 20 milliseconds um, and we're running this at a standard 50 hertz cycle which is a 20 millisecond cycle um, because that equates to 3000 cycles a minute and uh, in terms of camshafts that's 6000 rpm at the crank so it's pretty much the engine full bore so uh, for instance an 18 millisecond pulse on a 20 millisecond cycle is um, 18 over 20 which is 90 percent duty that's as far as you want to go and if we run it at a 2 millisecond pulse um, that allows us to go 2 milliseconds over 20 which is 10% duty cycle um, so they're numbers that work for us now to control things at that sort of rate you can't use relays because relays won't react on milliseconds you need about 10 milliseconds or more for a relay um, so in order to control the four injectors here what I'm using is an old Alan Bradley uh, Micrologics PLC um, this one the inputs were broken on uh, so uh, that doesn't matter for us because we're not using those um, but on the outputs we can program the Alan Bradley to run on those cycles um, so I've done that, I've made a quick program and we can adjust those times so that's pretty much it it's as simple as you like and um, the only other change that we've done is we're using, on the Alan Bradley uh, we're using a transistorised output because uh, as I said the relay outputs are too slow uh, so we've got an output, re um, output transistor card there uh, and because we're using coils um, on all of the connectors for the uh, the injectors I've put a flyback diode um, just to protect the transistors um, in the output card there so that's pretty much it um, all I'm going to do is the switch turn it on there's our fuel pressure and I've got this programmed up uh, pretty simply so if I just touch this here wire onto there there we go I've got a timer running on the program so I can change the time so we run all of them for a standard time um, obviously for higher uh, duty cycles you run it for a shorter time because otherwise it fills up the um, the 500 milliliter um, lab things I've got here things is that what they're called things yep and um, all we do is look at the fuel level once we've run it for a certain length of time um, and we will map it out um, 2, 3, 4, 8, 12 and 18 millisecond pulses at 50 hertz um, and then you get a full injector map so that's pretty much how it goes um, as easy as a light, pretty simple, cost us less than 50 quid to build this um, and we can now duty test um, all of our cheap Chinese injectors and we can match them uh, we have 20 of these uh, red injectors uh, and we're going to flow match them all and we will show you the results and we will pick a match set of eight and we're going to put them in turbo shed so we can turn it up to 30 pound a boost.
The Corolla injectors we're using are actually a straight drop-in fit into the 1UZ. The only difference is they use a 1ZZ connector instead of the 1UZ. So we have five sets of four injectors to test and we have five different times we're using for each of the injectors. That's a lot of data but it'll give us a comprehensive picture of what these are doing so we can match the best set. After each run we just look at the amount of fuel in each of the measuring jugs. We record those values in a spreadsheet and then once we've done all 20 injectors, we can graph it out and see what we've got. Each test takes between 20 seconds and 3 minutes, depending on the pulse width that we're operating at. And 300 millilitres is a good number to be able to compare. It gives us enough resolution in the test data. You can start to see here where we've got variations with the amount these are flowing at this particular pulse width. So this is the raw data table we end up with and this top section here is the raw data. The top line is the injector number 1 to 20. On the left we have the run time and the pulse and the duty cycle. The numbers in the middle are the actual cc's they flowed and the number at the bottom is the injector flow at 90%. What we do is correct all that into deviation percentage from the average and then we can compare and graph it. One thing to notice here, you'll see uh, 1 and 3 didn't work at all. Number 6 flowed way too much at low pulse widths and 13 and 15 were also dead. So from our 20 injectors, 5 of them are junk. There's lots of different ways you can graph the data that we've got. One of the ways is to look at the cc per shot with pulse width plotted against the cc a shot. And what we're looking for is a nice linear pattern. And you can see actually these aren't too bad. We've got two outliers at the top and there's the two at the bottom which are numbers one and three which were dead anyway. But the rest of them aren't grouped too badly there and they're kind of linear. The cc a shot graph doesn't tell us enough information so really we need to look at the deviation. So if we look at these numbers 1.000 is our average and what we do is we compare the rest of the injectors to that average and then we take off the outliers and that will give us the match set. So on this data we've got 6, 14, 10 and 18 so we can take those off because they're the outliers and that center band of injectors we've got would actually make a pretty decent matched set. So let's see what that set is. So taking the 8 from the center, this is what we get. 
things are exaggerated of course because of the scales we're using but originally we started off with some injectors that we bought some were dead some were up to 15 percent different on flow and now we have a set here that at low pulse widths which is tick over sort of stuff we are within five percent and when things are running at high duty cycles we're actually within 3% so that's a great result we also have enough data here that we can map those exact flows against the pulse widths into the Haltech which means we should have a very sweet running engine that's equal on all the cylinders so that's how you go about flow matching $10 injectors off the internet and being able to achieve um, a good matched set of injectors without paying $100 or $150 each for them, which you can do if you wish. So, there we are. That's the end of this video. Thank you very much for watching. We're going to put them in the car. We're going to see how they get on. And we're going to report back. Cheers.